A Game Boy Advance that can play any one game at a time is a fine system, but a GBA that can play 4,213 games across four different systems, now that's a gem. The Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition will let you play Game Boy Advance, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and a special trick up its sleeve NES games on your Game Boy Advance. We're about to set this thing up and put it through its paces together on this Game Boy Advance, and we're starting now. Inside the box is the Easy Flash cart. It's translucent and very cool looking, and you'll notice there's no battery as all of your saves are backed up to RAM. And optionally, you can buy a micro SD card when you buy the cartridge. The 16 gigabyte micro SD card is large enough to hold the entire library of all four systems. The first thing to do when you get your Easy Flash Omega Definitive Edition is to log on to the easyflash.cn website and download the system software known as the kernel. This stuff's kind of smallish, let's zoom in and take a closer look. The kernel and operating system software is located right here. Click on this download link to download the software. Then on that same page, scroll down toward the bottom and you'll find two more downloadable pieces of content. The first one is a cheats file that you can install. And the second one is a set of image files or thumbnails that you can use with Game Boy Advance games. Do take note, they're only available for Game Boy Advance. The other consoles do not currently support thumbnails. Inside your downloads folder, unzip all three of the zip files that you just downloaded. That's gonna be the cheats file, the image file, and the kernel file that contains the system software. And I recommend that as you extract each of these files that you delete the zip files to eliminate clutter out of the downloads folder moving forward. You'll find two PDFs in the downloads folder. They're instruction manuals in two different languages. You can either archive them on your computer or just delete them if you don't need them. Insert either the micro SD card you purchased when you bought the Easy Flash or a separate micro SD card formatted in either FAT32 or XFAT format. Now you can just simply drag and drop all of the things inside your downloads folder right onto the root of the micro SD card. We need to take a moment to look at ROM management on your micro SD card, especially if you have large volumes of games that you plan to copy over. In this example, I already have all four systems and all four sets of ROMs pre-staged in a volume that's called ROMs on C. It's a ROMs folder that's just right on the root of drive C. Take note, you can label folders any way you wish. I just have them labeled in ways that make sense to me and I thought might make sense as we go through this process. One just called GB for Game Boy, GBA for Game Boy Advance, GBC for Game Boy Color, and NES for the NES. It's how you manage content inside these folders that makes the difference. What I found was, if you're gonna use a card formatted in FAT32 format, which with the 16 gigabyte you would, you'll need to split these up into folders that are subsets of 512 files each. If you don't do this and you throw them all in one folder, what you'll have is a set of ROMs that has everything in that folder, but the Easy Flash cartridge will only see the first 512 files. What I've done here to make life a little easier is split these files up into folders that have the first letter of the first ROM and the first letter of the last ROM inside each folder. That way they just become a tree that you can go to each subset and find the games that you're looking for. Two other important things to note here. The first one is however you have the file of your ROM named is exactly how the title is going to appear inside the Easy Flash menu. And the other thing is the ROMs cannot be compressed. If you have zip or 7z files, you'll need to extract these ROMs before Easy Flash will be able to use them. All of that having been said, you can go back to the menu where you have your ROMs folders and just simply copy the ROMs folders or individual ROMs if you prefer, and then paste them right onto the root of the micro SD card. Be aware that depending upon the number of files that you plan to copy over and the speed of your micro SD card, this can take a while. Once you have all of your ROMs copied over to your micro SD card, you're done with your PC. You can close out any instances of File Explorer and remove the micro SD card from your computer. Insert the micro SD card into the Easy Flash. Take note that it has to be aligned toward the bottom of the port. Then insert the Easy Flash into your Game Boy Advance, but don't power it on yet. We've got an important step to take. To install that software update you put on your micro SD card, press and hold the right shoulder button and then turn on the system. After the Game Boy splash screen appears, you'll go directly to the Easy Flash menu and the system will automatically install the update. Once the install is complete, you'll automatically be taken to the Easy Flash main menu. You can navigate the various tabs across the top of the menu screen by pressing the right and left shoulder buttons. From here, you'll be able to make changes to things like the date and time, system language, 
use of the real-time clock for games that support it, use of the Easy Flash LED, and selecting some of the hotkey buttons that control key features throughout the interface. Heading back to the main menu, let's check out the games and see how they actually perform when they're loaded from the SD card. Remember during the setup process of the micro SD card that I mentioned that the way that you set these things up on the card is the way that they're going to show up in the menu? This is that process in action. So I'm going to go down to GB for Game Boy. When you drill into this, you'll see that the games are split up into 512 file folders and each one has its own alphabetical listing. So I'm going to drill in and get one of my wife's favorite games and pull it up here. You can use up and down on the D-pad to scroll game by game, or you can also press right and left to scroll screen by screen. This saves a lot of time when you have 512 games inside one folder. Once you've found the game you want, use the up and down arrows to highlight it, and then press the A button. You'll be given the option to boot the game in what's called clean mode, which has no add-ons, or you can boot it with the add-ons that you've previously selected in the menus. As the Game Boy Advance system already natively supports Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games, I found that all of these launched and ran with no problems at all, just like the original cartridge was loaded. NES is kind of its own category, as the Game Boy Advance doesn't natively support it, and emulation is run from the Easy Flash itself. Let's check it out. Overall, emulation of NES games worked really well. For example, here's Contra and it seems to play really smooth and had no great difficulties in loading the game or playing it and it had good sound quality. The USA version of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, however, had graphical glitches throughout the title screens, the menus, and even in the gameplay itself. It's not that the game isn't playable because I think even in this condition it is still playable and it's amazing that it can even be emulated on the Game Boy Advance itself, but it's definitely worth noting here so that you'll temper your expectations when it comes to NES emulation. So what do I think about this? It's practically like soft modding your Game Boy Advance without having to do any of the modding work. I absolutely recommend this for any Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP, or even Nintendo DS owner. Then you check out this video here, shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below for more great content. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.